Hi Stamping Friends, welcome back. It's Sandy here and I am working on All About Layers lesson number two in the Ultinu Educator Program and I'm going to be working with the hand-picked bouquet stamp set today and it comes with this lovely booklet that has all kinds of goodies to help us out with this. So I'm going to start with the background first and I'm going to show you a really simple background technique using the uh, ink pads from Altenew and these are the cubes and I'm using frayed leaf and dewdrop and I am starting with the green and I'm pulling it from the top of the card down. And then I'm going to grab the blue, and again this is dewdrops, and I'm going to do the same thing. I use the flat surface at the very top just to add a lot of ink at the top, and then I'm angling the little cube so that I'm just using the edge and I'm pulling it down. And you'll notice I'm leaving the bottom right hand corner clean. That's where the sentiment is going to go. Otherwise I'm going to stamp right over top and that's also why I went with the light colors on this. So just a little bit of background noise to add to the print. The five page booklet that comes with the stamp set gives you ideas and it also gives you color choices and instead of reinventing the wheel I'm going to use the first set that they have suggested which is frayed leaf, forest glades, mountain mist I don't have so I'm just going to skip it, dewdrops, aqualicious, teal cave and jet black. I'm using my misty, the misty is really important for doing this layered stamping, it makes it so simple and I'm starting with the big outline stamp and I'm stamping it in jet black and you'll notice that the bottom left side a little bit is going to be stamped off of the card and I did that on purpose. I kind of like going outside the lines and it also allows me the space for my sentiment in the bottom right hand corner. And uh, the jet black ink is awesome but I am going to do stamp it twice just to make sure I have got a really good dark background for my layered stamping and I'm just using my cloth to help rub on the misty and I'm going to clean all of this off with my um, chamois before I switch over and if you flip the uh, layering guide you'll see which ones you have to play with so we're starting with the big one on the left hand side that's colored pink and there are two green marks that show you where to line up this solid image stamp and so what I'm doing is I have penciled in my lineups and then I'm lining that exactly up right over top of my black outline and I'm moving my uh, magnets in because this is a solid image stamp and it's going to pull the paper up so you have to be really careful about that. There's a lot of uh, surface that is pulling on that. It's a little bit easier once you've got it inked up. So again I'm starting with the lightest ink which is the Dewdrop. It's going to be my black gown color and you can lift the misty and just make sure that you've got it exactly where you want it and again as I said I'm stamping twice solid image you sometimes get a little bit of bubbly stuff going on so to ensure I get a good spread of ink I'm stamping it twice. Cleaning that stamp and moving on to the next one and this is the medium pink in here and there's also green spots to show you where to line up the stamp again and if you just pick those two places to line your stamp up, the rest of it just kind of falls into place. So again, I'm lining it up on top of my stamped image. And then I'm going to close the lid of the Misty, and that's going to secure the stamp to the lid so that I can ink it up. And I have my inks across the top in the order in which I'm going to use them so I don't get them mixed up. So this is the medium ink. This is the Aqualicious. And again, stamping, rubbing and I'm going to ink it up again. Again there's a lot of flat surface on there so I want to make sure that I have a nice inked image. Cleaning that with my chamois. Okay, removing that stamp and we're going for our third layer. And there are two lineup spots on this in, in the guide. They're done in a light yellow. This one's a little bit harder to line up so you just need to be patient with it. And you can also look at the big image at the bottom and it will show you the darker pieces where it's going to stamp. And you can also see here on this light pink image. So there's a couple of different places that you can look for lining up ideas. And I think I've stamped this four times already practicing so I'm getting pretty good at lining this one up. 
I did put a couple of pencil marks in there just to be on the safe side. So closing the lid so that I get the stamp attached to the lid and I am inking it with the darkest color now which is the Teal Cave, giving it a good rub. And I think I decide that I'm going to, no, I'm just going to do it once because that ink is nice and dark. So I'm going to move down and we're going to do the leaves. So on your layering guide, you'll see that the first one is the big solid image done in the kind of lime green on the picture. And so I'm lining that up with the little squiggles that they give you in the diagram. Okay, closing the lid. And I'm going to be using the frayed leaf ink getting my image set, moving my magnets in so it doesn't pull my paper up. Again, the solid image stamp has a lot of surface, so it's going to pull on your paper. So add a couple extra magnets to make sure that your paper doesn't move around on you. And of course, you can't go right down into the corner with this one because I've, on purpose, put the stamp off to the edge. So I painted myself into a corner, so to speak. Okay, so did that twice again because it's solid image. Didn't want any bubbles showing up. Transferring over to the uh, outline stamp, which is going to add a bunch of detail to my leaves for me. And the leaves are only two layers of stamping. They're not three like the uh, flower was at the top. So placing that second one on and using the red uh, detailed guidelines that are in the guide to line my stamp up. And using my pencil because it keeps sticking to my finger. <laughs> They're very sticky. Okay, so it pays to take the time to make sure that everything is lined up properly. That will give you a good finished product. So closing the lid, securing the stamp on it, moving my magnets in even closer so it doesn't wiggle around, and going for the darker green, because this is the highlights. And again, you can pick your Misty up and make sure that it's going to stamp where you actually want it to. Voila, isn't that pretty? So there's some additional stamps in here that will add to the highlights of this stamped image. And we're going to use those next to finish our layers. So the little dots go down in the bottom left hand corner. And then we've got the flowers going in the top right corner. And then there's that little bud and we're going to fill that in with the main filler as well. So you can do all three of these at the same time because they're not right on top of each other. So there's lots of room in the Misty to do this. And we're going to do them all in the light blue, the dew drop. So got them all secured on my lid. Just going to ink them up and give them a little stamp. So one layer here because this is kind of background. Clean those stamps off and there are some highlights to add to this uh, as in the leaves. They're all on one stamp so I am going to lay them on, down on top of my black outline and they line up quite easily. You don't actually need any guidelines to fit that in there. Close the lid and I'm going back to my frayed leaf for this one, the light green, and just stamping it once. There we go. All my little spots are all filled in. So now I can move on to my sentiment. So I'm placing that down in the bottom right hand corner, moving the other stamps off of my grid and closing the lid using the lines, the grid lines on the lid to make sure that it's on there straight. And I'll be stamping this in the jet black again. And I do stamp it a couple of times to make sure that it's good and dark. This is a very fine line, beautiful font, um, but it did require <laughs> three times stamping to get a good solid image. And there we go. We're finished with our card front. I'm using my score buddy to score my card base and this is Hammer Mill 100 pound, four and a quarter by 11. I'm scoring and folding it at five and a half and then I'm also going to burnish it with my bone folder just to get a nice smooth crease at the top before I place it back into my score buddy. Add some adhesive to your card front that you just finished stamping. And then use the corners of the score buddy to line up that card front and lay it down onto the base. It's a nice way to get a perfect join on those two pieces. I'm going to add a few sequins and these are from Santa's Stamps through the Flowering Clover. It's a new package that they just came out with and the colors are really pretty greens, blues and a little bit of fuchsia and purple. So there's lots of colors in here that will go beautifully with my card and I picked out some greens and blues to add to both of them. 
and I am just going to use my Studio Acacia wand to attach them with some white glue and then I'm going to show you three different ways I've used this card. Here we go, here's the three cards. The one on the left is the one that I just shared with you in the video. I just added a few sequins. The center one, I use the Simon Says A2 Thin Frame to cut out that center frame using this one right here. So you cut it out and then you cut out a second one in the blue and then you inlay it when you put the pieces back together on your card front, which is really pretty. The third one is actually the spotlight technique and I'm going to do a separate video on this one because you have to stamp both of these images twice and then do your die cutting and your layering. So we'll save that for another day. Anyway, thank you so much for stopping in. I hope you enjoyed the video. All the supplies that I've used today are linked underneath this video in the comments and there's a link over to my blog as well. Thank you so much for stopping in and until next time, toodles!